Hello and welcome to Planted Nutrition. My name is Luke, I'm a nutritionist. And today we're diving in whew, into the science of fasting. Is fasting as good as people say? Is it even worth doing? What even is fasting? There's so many different types. Don't worry, we're covering it all. Fasting and the practice of abstaining from food has been practiced for millennia, whether that was by our ancestors and the fact that they literally did not have food and they went days without food because it wasn't available all the time or through religious ceremony, various religions around the world practice different forms of fasting. And in recent years, scientific research has focused on fasting as a therapeutic intervention and starting to uncover a range of potential health benefits. So let's get into them and help you decide if fasting is something that you would like to try. So what are some of the potential health benefits of fasting? So number one is improved metabolic health. Because fasting or abstaining from calories helps to promote weight loss and reduces insulin resistance and also improves cholesterol and triglyceride levels, it can potentially help to reduce our risk of things like type 2 diabetes. And a review of the research on intermittent fasting highlighted that for some people, intermittent fasting can help improve their metabolic health. It's probably due to things like eating in alignment with our circadian rhythm. And if you want to learn more about this field of chrononutrition, which is super interesting, I've done a video on it, which you can check out in the annotation wherever that is. And the reason why this might be is intermittent fasting is eating within a certain time in the day and it's generally stopping us from eating late at night. A lot of us, we have in those midnight snacks and while they are delicious, they aren't necessarily optimal for our metabolic health. We probably want to give our body a bit of time without food each day to rest and digest for optimum health. And so Number two, fasting is actually a really powerful way to reduce blood pressure. So for those of us that have high blood pressure and are at risk of cardiovascular disease because of it, it can be a really powerful intervention. And again, there's various types of fasting, such as intermittent fasting, which is generally pretty easy to incorporate into our daily routine. But there's also research on things like alternate day fasting or even just fasting one day a week can be a potentially helpful tool here as well. So number three, there's interesting research from researchers like Volta Longo looking at fasting and longevity. And it's important to mention, this is a pretty new area of research and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to further elucidate the effects of fasting. But there is some evidence that fasting seems to activate some cellular processes. It helps to clear out our dead and old senescent cells and helps against oxidative damage and inflammation, which are key contributors to aging. And there's research on different organisms like rats, fruit flies, and even some monkeys that fasting could help with longevity and aging. But again, we don't have a lot of research in humans. Animal research is always interesting, but there's always the question of whether that actually translates over into humans. There's a few other areas of health that fasting might help with. Obviously, weight loss is one of them. If we're restricting calories, it can be easier to lose weight. For some people, some people might find it works really well for them. Others might not, so that's why it's important to work with your nutritionist or dietitian or healthcare professional to find a plan that works for you. There's also some research on things like immune function and potentially even cancer. I'm not going to touch on them too much here, but they are also interesting other areas of research that fasting might be able to help with. Keyword might. We still need more research in this area. And so now let's get into it, okay? Fasting might be beneficial. So, how should I do it? Generally, as a nutritionist, if I have someone that's interested in fasting, something that's pretty easy to recommend is something like intermittent fasting, circadian rhythm eating. Again, you can check out my video on that. But it's basically eating for approximately a 10 hour window during the day. And this basically gives us time before bed to stop eating. So our body has time to digest our food from the day and rest overnight. We eat in the morning that sets up our circadian rhythm. It might help with sleep and have metabolic health benefits. Eating in a 10 hour window, it could look like, you know, start eating at 8 a.m., finish eating at 6 p.m. Start eating at 10 a.m., finish eating at 8 p.m. You see how it works. It's gonna be different for everyone, but we probably wanna eat more of our calories earlier in the day rather than later in the day. So I recommend trying to start earlier if possible. And there's certainly other types of fasting like 
36 hour fasting and even longer fasting regimens, which might be helpful for people with certain other health conditions. But it's generally recommended if you're wanting to do a longer fast to do it under the support of an expert because it's quite an intense experience. Although it's something I've done quite a lot, especially like 36 hour fast and for sure it makes you grateful that we have food. When you're really truly hungry and you get in touch with that and you get to eat even something simple like an apple, it's like the best apple in the world. And if you are interested in trying fasting, I offer nutrition consultations which you can book at the link in the description and I'd love to help you out with that. Finding a protocol that works for you. And something else to be aware of when you're fasting is if you are feeling hungry, you can be irritable and not the nicest person to be around. So just be aware of that. If you are fasting, it's generally better to create a safe space where you can rest. Ideally, you don't want to probably be doing it while you're at work or while you're doing something important. Ideally, maybe when you're starting out, trying it in the weekend when you can be safe and at home in your own space because it is an intense experience. While it's generally safe for most people and our bodies are adapted to it, it's also not for everyone and if you are totally put off by the idea of going without food, you don't need to. And again, you could look into something more like circadian rhythm eating. You can still get quite a lot of the benefits just by kind of shrinking down that eating window in the day. That's what I'd recommend for most people. We don't need to go extreme. Just making little tweaks to our lifestyle is probably the best way forward because it's easy, but also we can stick to it. And also a lot of extreme things. Again, we've talked about there's not a lot of research behind fasting yet and it's better to put our energy into things that are proven to work. Like, rather than doing extreme fasting, just eating a healthier whole food diet is a really good start. Have you tried fasting? Let me know how it went for you in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I've been Luke from Planted Nutrition. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to give it a like as that really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. See you again in the next video, and until then, stay healthy, my friends.